torque element. Before I say anything else, breathe in because this one sentence will change how you think about electric cars. Elon Musk slipped it into a conversation and moved on like it was nothing. Tesla has been working on something for many years, mostly internally, with a handful of quiet acquisitions to get the cost per kilowatt hour down. That offhand line is the breadcrumb. Follow it, and you find a path that leads to an actual rebellion against the entire battery industry as we know it. Picture this with me a car priced like an ordinary compact, built at real world volumes that charges almost as fast as pumping gas, uses metals that are plentiful and cheap, and packs a battery that survives longer than most engines. If that sounds impossible, that's exactly why it matters. Most of the world has been obsessing over incremental battery gains, a few percentage points in energy density, a bit faster charging, while the real revolution was quietly being engineered in chemistry labs, small pilot lines, and acquisitions nobody noticed. This is the story of aluminum ion, and why Tesla's Model 2 is not just another cheap car. It may be the lever that moves an entire industry. Start with the practical problem that keeps people waking up at night about EVs. Cost and anxiety. Batteries still eat the lion's share of an EV sticker price. When lithium prices spike, car prices wobble. When supply chains tighten, production stalls. For decades the battery world ran on one fragile assumption. That lithium and a handful of expensive companion metals are unavoidable. That assumption baked scarcity, volatility, and geopolitical risk into every EV on the road. Replace that chemistry and you rewrite the basic economics. Aluminum is everywhere. It's not glamorous but it's abundant, cheap, and recycled at tiny energy cost compared to fresh raw metal. Sodium, salt, is literally in the oceans. The brilliance of the new approach lies not only in the material abundance but in how the chemistry behaves under stress. Lithium cells rely on flammable solvents. They can burn violently when abused. Aluminum ion cells can use ionic liquid electrolytes that are not volatile. They tolerate heat, punctures, and abuse in ways lithium cells simply cannot. That reality alone changes car design. It lets engineers breathe. It lets factories simplify cooling systems and safety enclosures that add cost and weight today. But this is where you have to hang on. Aluminum ion is not some polished science fiction pitch. The last two years have seen real progress. University teams moved from promising proofs of concept to prototypes with real-world charge acceptance rates. Private labs figured out how to make carbon-based cathodes that accept aluminum's three-electron transfer without collapsing. The tough parts, corrosion, moisture sensitivity, electrode swelling, moved from unsolved to solvable. Meanwhile, companies quietly patented ionic liquid blends and roll-to-roll -roll graphene coatings that make mass manufacturing thinkable. Put those advances together and you don't just get a slightly better battery. You get a chemistry that changes the rules. Now imagine Tesla with its obsession for vertical integration, its enormous cash flow, and a history of making the impossible practical, adopting this chemistry. They buy the right pieces, a graphene supplier here, a dry electrode maker there, a specialty electrolyte firm quietly. They bring the know-how together inside their factories. That's the acquisition trail Musk hinted at in his offhand sentence. That's the signal the rest of the industry missed. And why the Model 2? Why not the high-margin roadster or a luxury sedan where the marketing splash would be bigger? Because of risk management and strategy. A mass-market compact is the perfect platform to prove a disruptive chemistry. It has lower absolute range expectations, it benefits massively from weight reduction, and its production volumes dilute early manufacturing kinks rapidly. You launch a new chemistry in the kind of car that needs cheap, durable batteries more than anything else. The Model 2 becomes the laboratory at scale. Think about charging. One of the emotional barriers older buyers feel about EVs is time. We've all heard the stories. Long trips turned into anxious countdowns, coffee breaks stretched into half-hour waiting sessions, charging stops that feel like interruptions. Aluminum ion prototypes have demonstrated shockingly fast charge acceptance in lab tests. Not incremental improvements but category shifts. What used to need 20 to 30 minutes can, at prototype scale, be compressed to minutes. That difference changes human behavior. If charging looks and feels like refilling a car, you stop planning your life around batteries. You stop worrying about range like a precondition of ownership and start treating electric vehicles as truly convenient. Safety follows speed. Faster charging often means more heat. More heat often means risk. But aluminum chemistry's higher thermal stability and non-volatile electrolytes reverse that trade-off. You get faster fill times with fewer fire risks. That's the real leverage. You don't sacrifice safety for convenience. You get both. Durability is the third pillar. 
Battery replacements have always been the psychological tragedy of EV ownership. A few thousand miles, a decade of use, and suddenly the battery's capacity fades and replacing it can cost thousands. That's a non-trivial cost for families on tight budgets, for fleets balancing costs per mile, and for older owners wary of long-term value. Aluminum ion early tests indicate cycle life dramatically higher than today's cells. Not a tiny edge but a magnitude that pushes battery life well into durations that outlast the vehicle's other systems. Imagine a pack that still holds most of its original capacity after a million kilometers of use. Ownership dynamics shift. Cars become durable assets. A battery that outlives multiple owners removes a major drag on resale value and changes the mental model of buying a car. You're not renting a battery anymore, you're buying durable mobility. There's a supply chain angle that tilts geopolitics. Today, a handful of countries dominate lithium and rare earth mining and refining, which grants them leverage over prices and availability. Aluminum is mined and refined in many places. Sodium is abundant. That means domesticizing the supply chain becomes possible. A Model 2 built with aluminum ion cells could be supplied largely from local sources, reducing shipping, tariffs, and the vulnerability the industry has been living with. That's not a small operational advantage. That's a strategic realignment. Now, let me be honest, aluminum ion is not a magic bullet. Comes with its headaches. Corrosion and moisture sensitivity are real problems. The electrolyte chemistry can be aggressive with traces of water. Graphene production at scale is not trivial. Manufacturing yield will be the big early challenge. Aligning chemistry, precision coating, dry electrode processes, and cell sealing at scale is like orchestrating a thousand things to be flawless at once. But Tesla's special sauce is precisely that orchestration. They take technology that works in small batches and build factories that make it repeatable at scale. They have a track record of converting expensive dreams into mass-produced reality. Model 2 is the natural vehicle to do it with. Imagine walking into a Tesla showroom in the year this tech goes live. A compact Tesla priced like an ordinary hatchback but with features that feel premium. Fast charging you trust. A battery that won't surprise you in 10 years. And ownership costs that shift the equation in favor of EVs for households that previously couldn't justify the switch. Leasing companies and fleets will move first, because operating cost math becomes irresistible. Rental car fleets, ride hail, and delivery services will adopt in droves if the per mile cost collapses. That's how mass adoption scales, through fleets finding economics that work at high volume and pulling demand forward. So what about the timeline? Inside Tesla's labs, pilot lines and small-scale validation make a huge difference. If a pilot at a gigafactory validates cell yields, thermal behavior, pack integration, and recyclability at acceptable levels, rollout accelerates. That's why the Model 2's production plan matters more than a flashy unveil. It's a production-first story. The timeline to large volumes depends on achieving consistent yields and stable recycling. Recycling is the final piece of the puzzle. Aluminum is easy to recycle relative to lithium, and graphene and carbon can be reclaimed if you design the loop from the start. That matters because circularity reduces raw material costs and creates a feedback loop that further lowers price at scale. Now let's bring this closer to you. What would this change mean for the average buyer who's 35 or older, perhaps balancing family life, work, and real budgets? First, the immediate anxiety about range and charging evaporates on long trips. No more complicated route planning that revolves around high-speed chargers. Second, ownership costs fall because batteries cost less and last longer. Insurance claims for thermal events fall because the chemistry is inherently safer. Third, resale values stabilize because a durable battery reduces depreciation. Imagine a used Tesla in 10 years that still holds most of its original range. That's a car that retains value and feels like a smart investment, not a gamble. And emotionally, there is something else that matters. Trust. Older buyers tend to be conservative where money and safety are involved. They buy what's proven and dependable. A battery that demonstrably resists heat, survives abuse, and charges like a gas car reduces the psychological distance between traditional combustion ownership and the EV future. It's not just about the numbers. It's about the emotional decision to switch. That's a profound social lever. But here's the twist that makes this moment cinematic. Tesla isn't planning to keep aluminum ion exclusive. The Model 2 is a beachhead. 
If the chemistry proves robust and the production lines scale, the same gains extend across trucks, vans, and eventually premium cars. That's when competitive pressure will force everyone to choose. Invest in the new chemistry or be priced out. The result is a potential cascade where legacy players either pivot quickly or surrender market share. That is why investors and nations are watching. I won't paint this as inevitability. Chemistry is stubborn. Scale is merciless. A hundred things can go wrong even when the science looks solid. But the pattern in Tesla's playbook matters. Acquire critical tech, run pilot lines early, use low-cost platform vehicles to prove the tech at scale, then cascade improvements across the lineup. The Model 2 fits that exact pattern. So what should you do right now? Watch and think differently about the next car you buy. If Tesla can deliver a car that charges in minutes, costs far less and promises multi-decade durability, the calculus of car ownership changes. For commuters, retirees, families, fleets, everything looks different. If you want to keep up with this quietly unfolding story, join Torque Element. We are building toward a goal of 2,000 subscribers. People who want no-nonsense, data-rooted, emotionally intelligent breakdowns, not clickbait. If you like real analysis that goes beneath the PR and into the factory, hit subscribe. Your support helps keep independent coverage alive. Finally, a question I want you to think about and answer in the comments. If your next new car could be priced like an efficient compact, charge in the time it takes to get a coffee, and keep its battery health far longer than the car itself, would that change how you view ownership? Would you trade the ritual of engine maintenance for the simplicity of a durable, silent electric drive? Tell me what matters most to you, price, charging time, or long-term durability, and why. I'll be reading. Torque Element. We'll keep pulling these strings apart until the story is clear. This is not a rumor. This is a pattern. It's a chemistry shift a manufacturing strategy and an ownership revolution. And it's happening now.